Welcome to Deep Thought, Economic Cast. You know what? And I know people don't think that, you know, of course, people usually think in terms of caste, in terms of racial issues, and they're correct to think so. But I'm seeing economic caste as well. I'm seeing economic caste, like, particularly with social classes. Like, when you look at social classes, and there's been some talk uh, in this space about social classes lately, that is serious. Social classes is serious. Now, people tend to think that social classes are more lumped together or there's like an easy back and forth. Now, yes, people interact because of what their jobs and with people of different social classes, but what I'm seeing is probably already existed and I'm just really paying attention to. What I'm seeing is that You know, once a person gets into a certain social class or what I would call an economic caste, they might be stuck there for a while. Remember in the last episode, I spoke about a video I saw. I still need to look up that video uh, where it was said that only 4% of people will escape poverty. 4%. That means 96% of the people who are in poverty will stay there. But that can become like a caste if you really look at it. If you understand the monetary system and how people at the top maneuver things, you start seeing some caste stuff. Because think about something. To get to the top of a profession and some of these professions, they say, well, you got to have education. Indeed, that's one of the main things about the educational system in this country. You know, because it used to be you had to go through all this to get into school and everything. That was a way to keep uh, people from a lower class from getting to a higher class. They made it uh, harder. And then if you think about each social class, think about think about it. And a sociologist can, uh, they can cooperate what I'm saying because they will say there's different behaviors, different lifestyles between people of different classes, you know. Even, even the relationship thing, like people know me, for talking about relationships. People know me for talking about relationships. But one of the things that that I'm starting to talk about more but isn't talked about enough is there's a difference in relationships. There's a big difference in how two people who are lower class, say they in a system where, you know, they have a class that uh, I'll call them the uh, uh, lumping proletariat. The real poor, people living on government transfers or minor hustles and everything. There's a big difference how a man and a woman will relate and reproduce. Probably wouldn't have a standard family, but baby daddy, baby mama situation. And, you know, how they rear the children and everything. Versus, versus how upper class will do it. Like, if, I've seen, like, the lump and proletariat with their kids. They, they all had the kids up at 10 o'clock at night while they smoking and drinking, you know, barely paying attention to the kids, and the kids be some bad kids walking the streets or something. I've seen it. I've seen it. Whereas you get a child in the upper middle class, you know, they getting great rest. They eating well. They around, like, uh, well-behaved people. Not saying they perfect, but it's a different thing. And then even in the middle class, working class, uh, the semi-professional class, like teachers, nurses, stuff like that, or then the class of doctors, lawyers, and something like that. If you really see all of them, you see some distinct differences. Now, I know because I've seen everything from, and actually lived everything from the lumpen proletariat to the professional class. And I've interacted with enough people at that top level, even some, uh, I could call some names of some people that I've been cool with who were in the uh, 0.1%. Like I said, I can call some names, you know? You know, just being in a a school environment with them, um, particularly when I was at American University. You know, there were some rich kids there. <laughs> so I've seen it all, and it's, it's so many differences. But see, one of the things 
when we call it a cast, okay, what makes a cast? Well, the people tend to mate with each other. Now, they ain't forced to, but understanding relationships, the key word is relate. People of the same cast tend to stay together. Indeed, the word, the true meaning of the word hypergamy means someone is moving, a woman in particular is moving from a lower class to a higher class. And uh, I forgot the exact term. There's something similar for men, but it don't happen as much. It don't happen as much. and But a lot of times people don't see that because, quite frankly, once we're in a class, most people don't move back and forth. If they in a lumping proletariat, <laughs> they pretty much stuck there. One, they ain't working that much. If they working at all, government transfers, you know, cheaper stores, everything, food, everything. And it could affect a lot. It's like they relate to each other and this is their world. People don't realize that. Like I said, I've studied, I study subcultures. I've been studying subcultures uh, since the mid '90s. I was working on a job. Uh, it was at the Department of Justice Disability Rights Section. We had uh, several uh, deaf uh, workers there, including uh, an attorney, a couple of the attorneys. And I found out about deaf culture, and that's actually what got me interested in subcultures because they have a distinct, they have a distinct language, American Sign Language. Only sign language thing I remember now, though, is bullshit. Yeah, if this was on video, I would I would give it to people. <laughs> I'd show y'all what bullshit and sign is. But it was a distinct thing. So I started paying attention to other stuff, but then I started noticing the social classes. And I started remembering. It's like, well, hold up. When I travel from social class to social class, like I remember when I was uh, living in a poor part of D.C. as a uh, young person, Now, I'm around the lumpen proletariat there, but also, you know, some working class. But then if I would go see my grandparents and they had, you know, they weren't married. Uh, They had divorced way before I was born, but they had, they both had their houses they owned. And my grandmother had several houses and uh, she was, she was on the edge of bougie. She was edge and so was the family. Uh, Many members of the family, edge of bougie. I'll just say not totally. But it was a different thing. And then in high school, you know, I started really being exposed to more upper class uh, folks. And, you know, we had working class and, you know, uh, solid middle class, but some upper class. So you start seeing differences in behavior and everything. And the reality is, yes, there are some people who can, like, travel between them and move up from one to the other. But in that as much. So what you almost have is a caste system. Now, it's not enforced uh, by any laws or anything. But let's think about something now. If I, I've known the situations where if a woman, if she's publicly looking at a lower class guy, well, she probably had to keep it on the low. She would get clowned. Her friends would be like, oh, no, him. What did he do for a living? Oh, no, you can't get with him, even though he could be making a lot of money. And that's another thing. Money doesn't necessarily mark it. People think it do. It can be a marker, but someone can be working class and make six figures and still be seen as working class or in that cast, the economic cast, but then be someone else not making nearly as much, but because of their background, they're considered elite. Like you get a lot of people, a lot of young people who got a trust fund and everything. Shoot, they don't really need a job like that. <laughs> And shoot, living on a property so big, they can get their own wing and everything. Or even parents might even buy them a home. So they might just do something for fun, artsy or something like that. But even though one, they still different classes and the one, even though they ain't making as much money, would still be considered that. Now, see, that's when that economic class thing comes in. And I'm thinking about it. And if you honestly, if you really look at it, it's a real thing. There's been a... um, in fact, I'm going to look for an article, see if I can uh, link it, see if there's some the new American aristocracy talking about the 9.9% and everything different about them. And there's been some other authors who've talked about that, like the differences. And that becomes, uh, that could becomes a caste system. And I want you all to think about that. So I want you all to check that out, all right? I want you all to check that out. So once, and you know how I do on here, it's something to think about. I mean, you still got to look at it, look at it. It's nothing absolute because, you know, on this channel, I don't, I don't speak in absolutes. I speak just to think. So, you know, if somebody can add something to it, I appreciate it. Y'all know how I am on here. 
My other channel, oh yeah, I'm quick to delete and block. But on this channel, as long as you're intelligent in how you uh, express yourself. So anyway, that's all I got for now. I'll get back with you later. Peace.